Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys had a great week this week. This week, we're gonna be taking a look at the Central Knitting Machine. And I hope you guys enjoy all the projects that we're gonna take a look at, because this is an exciting one. Thank you guys so much for joining. So this is live number 14. And I'm really excited to show all the new projects to for you. Um, we're just going to have a great time and I hope you guys really enjoy this. Let's just take a look of who we have out there and do our technology check. So if you can see me and hear me, please let me know in the chat so I can make sure that you guys are seeing and hearing everything that we're going to talk about today. So looks like we have a few people out there. I want to say hi to Crafting with Robin. Hi to Jeanette Woods. We have Judy Bauer, we have Marion Allison, we have One Minute Tips, and I see Robin Shiver. Thank you guys for joining and letting me know that you can see me and hear me. I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Oh gosh, we have so much to go through. Let me just give you another quick announcement. Um, if you don't know already, we have our trivia questions at the beginning of the hour and for those of you who have been participating, we've been posting the top trivia champions over on our community page. So take a look at that if you haven't already, because we've got um, about two weeks in now, I believe, more or less, um, of the questions. And I think you guys are really pulling up some challenges today. So today's trivia questions were a little bit more difficult. I think I got a couple of you here and there. So let's just go over. The first one was green. I think a lot of you got that one. Uh, the second one was Paducah, Kentucky. Um, I thought I saw even in the chat, I think Robin said that she's even been there, which is amazing. And um, a lot of people actually think that it's where the Missouri Star Quilting Company is, but actually it's not. So that was pretty interesting and caught me on that one too. Um, the next one, which is where I, th where I think I stumped a lot of you guys, it is a process called, and I hope I say this correctly, it's jat Jataku, Jataku, I think it's called. Um, close enough. But it's actually a really interesting process. I have a neighbor who actually does it and has amazing works on his walls. So it's when they're taking a fish and they do put a... Um, it's like a, uh, I want to say like a dye. It's not really a dye. It's like a paint, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it, they basically paint the fish on top and then they take a paper and they put the paper on top of the fish and they feel and kind of rub the paper with their hands onto the fish. And then when you pull the paper off, you have the image of the fish. So a lot of these divers and fishers that go out there and they make these huge catches of fish will do that. And that kind of just preserves the story of the fish that they caught. And, you know, they're able to actually, um, you know, show that on their walls. But yes, it's a real fish. They take a real fish that they caught from the day, put it on a table, put that um, paint on top, put the paper on top, and then rub the um, paper on to the fish and then pull the paper off. And it is actually really amazing. And then what they do is once they've taken it off, it looks almost like a charcoal colored. It's, and then what they do is they take the paint colors of their choice and they, they paint it. And it is beautiful. So. If you have never heard of that, um, go ahead and, and Google it. I think there's some even some videos on YouTube on it and it's actually really beautiful. And then once they're done with that fish, they wash off the paint and they cook up the fish and eat it. So <laughs> it's actually something that's pretty interesting. I had never heard of it and I thought it was just amazing. Um, and they have these really beautiful images on the wall. So that was um, trivia number three. And then the fourth one, of course, was the handle. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty neat, um, especially that third one. I found that one to be really interesting and it was just a lot of fun. So take a look at that stuff. Again, I don't know if I'm saying it why it's ja Jataku. It's G-Y-O-T-A-K-U is, is the word. 
I hope I said that right. <laughs> okay, so last week we talked about quilting templates. So for those of you who have who missed last week, that's live number 13. Um, we talked about quilting templates and I shared some projects and some oopsies with you. Um, I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of that as well again today because I, I think you guys really enjoyed that for me to show you not just you know the things that I was able to create but things that were failures as well. And so I've got a new gadget to show you today. I'm really excited about that. And let me just bring that over. So this is the Centro knitting machine. And it's not too heavily priced. I can tell you, um, I think it was, you'll find, You'll find different ones. You'll find a smaller one um, that really is not that pricey at all. It's like maybe $20 or so. And then you have the larger one. This is the 48 uh, pins, if you will. And, and I see a couple of people chatting. Yes, Judy, it looks like a baby walker. You're funny. <laughs> It kind of does, right? It does look like that. But that's definitely, you know, something that it's very lightweight. Um, it does have some suction cups on the end to clamp onto your table. And some people may have heard of this machine. Um, a lot of people use the Centro. There are different brands out there. Um, but one of the more, um, I guess, professional knitting machine would be called the Addy and that one runs at about 200 or so dollars but you know this one's a great machine especially to get started you know it's something that you know you it has a little counter on the side so it it, it does have that and then on the other side it does have a little wheel that you just crank and so when you're going through you know, your, your knitting projects, you go ahead and you crank that. And so on here, it also has a tension gauge and that's just a little um, clip, if you will, off to the side. It has three little holes. So it has different tensions that you can set it at. One is loose, one is, you know, kind of a medium and another one is a lot tighter. So I usually use the middle one, but it really depends on the project and the yarn that you're using in order to do it. So it is made out of plastic. So it's a hard plastic here. Um, it's, you know, it's, I, I have my ups and downs on this machine, I guess, you know, I think for the first time when you're knitting, it's a good machine to start with. And I think that, you know, it's it's a lot of fun to learn it. And I'll show you a few of the projects that I made. It has the little crank that I said, you just kind of crank it. And it, it's, this machine is pretty quiet for the most part. It's really not a loud machine. So it's something that you can kind of pop in a movie and you can just crank up something on your knitting machine. And there's so many things that you can make with this machine. I've made some hats, you can do panels, you can do so many things. So, you know, you can either knit it yourself if you're a knitter and you prefer to do it yourself, or if it's sometimes you have to get a quick gift out the door, this is something I can get a hat done in like 15 minutes. I mean, it's just amazing. So definitely some fun stuff that we'll talk about today. Um, we also have the adding machine, which like I said, it's a little bit more of a professional type machine because it's got better gears inside. And the biggest difference that I can tell you is that this Centro machine, it's a great machine, but it has issues with the type of yarn that you're using unless you take precautions for it not to jam up. Like I'll show you in a little bit as I show you the projects where I struggled with a heavier yarn that I was using. It was really difficult to crank the machine and get this thing going. But if you're using a lighter yarn or a medium weight yarn, I didn't have any issues. 
So it really depends on the type of yarn that you're using. And, you know, there are some things that you can do if you're using a heavier yarn, you can use some weights and there's other things that you can do. But I can tell you that um, the projects that I did and the yarn that I used, and I'll show you the different ones with the, with the different quality of it, um, you can still crank out your projects with that. So Centro machine, again, you have a little counter on the side, you have your tension gauge, you have your little cranking uh, knob, if you will. And then off to the side, it does have um, kind of like a little switch where you just set it to either tubular or panel. So we're gonna be using the tubular one and it's just basically just to do a long tube if you will and i'll show you how i use that to make my hats so it's a pretty nice machine to have again for a beginner i actually enjoyed this and it's it's just you know it was a lot of fun so let me just show you some of the things let me see if i captured everything here some of the things you're going to need in addition to your knitting machine. So let me just put this over to the side. And one of the things that we've talked about in some prior lives is the darning needle. And you're going to need a darning needle or some type of needle. Now, the machine does come with some plastic needles and I'll show you those. Let me just show you. These are the three that it comes with. And they're just different sizes. Okay. Those are the three that it comes with. Now, I'm not too much of a fan of these only because these don't have the little bent tip on the end. I prefer to use my darning needle because of that bent tip it just makes it a little bit easier to pick up your stitches and that's what you would use these for so you would crank out your project by you know turning it and going through however many rows depending on what you're making but once you have that in place you would then take your needles and then pick out each of these um, in between these little nooks and what you would do then is pick up your project onto your yarn and then you'd be able to take it off of the machine. So you definitely don't want to drop any stitches after you've already crank cranked out your project. So I just find that my darning needle with the tip that is bent is a little bit easier for me anyway don't know if you could see that very well. Let me see if I can try to angle it somehow. See how you have that little bit of a bent on here. It just makes it a little easier because it is bent that I can just kind of pick up that, um, that stitch between the two nooks. So that's my preference. And again, I'm using these darning needles that I got from Clover. That's the brand that I use. Um, but you know, you can use either one, you could even use the ones the needles that came with the machine itself. So it's totally up to you. This is just my preference. So it also came with a crochet hook. And that's something that you can use as well. And then, you know, the crochet hook, just how, you know, you've seen it on our trivia questions, you know, it is here. And then what you can do is just hook it on here as well. So it's really whatever preference you like when you're actually picking up those stitches. Most important part is that you don't drop the stitches because then that will lead to your project kind of unraveling. And I'll show you a little example of that as well. Okay, so biggest thing with this machine, and let me just take a quick look if we have any questions out here. Let's see. Robin says, I'm a very slow knitter. That looks like it would be quick. Yes, it's very quick, Robin. I just, I, I was amazed at how quick 
I was able to make a hat and it was just really, really amazing. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, Judy said, this will be an interesting class. Yes, it will. <laughs> All righty. We must be on the same wavelength today. Okay, did you show mom this machine? Yes, I did. And actually, um, I had a family member that was in the hospital this week, so I wasn't able to be in my crafting space a lot this week. So I decided to just take the crafts with me. So this is something that, you know, it's very portable. You can take it everywhere. Um, it does, when you first get the machine, you do have to put the legs onto the machine, but it's just kind of sliding it in. It has very, very small screws on here. And all you do is screw that on and then put the suction cups on. Now, one of the big differences between an Addy machine and this machine is that this machine does not come with a clamp. The Addy machine comes with a clamp and it allows you to clamp it onto a table, which is actually really nice to have because as you are cranking away with your hand on this, sometimes you got to kind of hold this bottom leg and crank it at the same time because it kind of moves around a little bit. It depends on the type of yarn that you're using. If you're using a really light yarn, it doesn't really do that as much. But if you're using a heavier yarn, then it does kind of tend to move and you got to kind of just hold the bottom with one hand and then crank it with the other. And then I like to hold the yarn in between my fingers just to kind of feel the tension that it's getting before it even goes through the guide. But that's just my preference. So, um, you know, that's it's very portable. You can take the legs off and then just kind of slip it in a bag and put the legs back on. Um, I just left the legs on, threw it in a bag, threw some yarn in there and took it with me, you know, and, and it was really nice because it helps pass the time. And it was something that, you know, I was able to just do right there in the hospital room and just kind of crank up a couple of projects. And it was a lot of fun because it kept everyone a little entertained, gets your mind off of things. So it was a lot of fun with that. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, Jeanette says you should do a video of mom using it. I should. Yeah, she had a lot of fun doing it. It was um, she for those of you that don't know, my mom is a crocheter. So there's a video, um, if you didn't catch it, I have a video with my mom showing all of her crocheted projects that she's done over the years. And she's got projects that are like over 50 years old. It's just amazing. They're beautiful bedspreads and table tablecloths and, and things that she makes. And then they are stunning, stunning projects. I really love it. And, you know, I showed her this machine and she was just kind of confused, like, wow, like, you know, like so many things that she does with her hands and with her little crochet needle, you know, like I have little projects that I just jump in and do. And this is just kind of a scrap, you know, yarn, the leftover yarn that I had. And I just started, you know, knitting it. Not really anything. Don't know what I'm making. I'm just knitting it to knit it just to use up the yarn. And then, you know, I can probably add this to the bottom of a towel or something or do something with it. But, you know, this, these are fun things and, and the crochet needles, you know, they vary which ones people prefer to use. They have ergonomic ones that don't hurt your hands. So, you know, if crocheting or knitting, you know, some people have like arthritis on their hands. So it makes it very difficult for them to do these types of projects. That's when something like these type of machines come in handy because you know it doesn't have that strain on your hands it's really just you cranking away you know and getting it done now there is an adapter that you can also purchase i haven't purchased it but there is an adapter you can purchase for the central and you can also get it for the addy as well and all it is is kind of a little uh, plastic piece that'll go on top of this crank handle and then you get a screwdriver, the electric screwdrivers, and you turn it on and it just gets this thing going. So all you have to do is press that button and that thing just starts cranking really fast. And if I do this in 15 minutes just by me cranking it away, you can imagine with this little screwdriver, you have that thing done in like 10 minutes. 
<laughs> it's the funniest thing to see that. So I haven't tried, I haven't really found a need for it. I, I'm fine just cranking away on it, but some people, you know, just really want to get it done really fast. They put that adapter in here and put the, screw, the screwdriver and it just cranks this thing like super fast. It's amazing. So like I said, this, the one that I purchased is the 48 um, pins and you'll notice on the central, you do have one pin that is white and you can see that one right here the white pin is kind of like your starting pin this is where i start off on my projects and what you would need to do to start one off and let me just start one off for you let's see i'll just take some yarn that i have here on the side well, this one's a really short yarn, so just so that I could show you how you would start it off. Um, what you would do is you would take about, I take about an arm's length of yarn and I drop that in the middle. And then what you do is you go to this white peg here and I will wrap the peg around it. So it's, you can see that the white peg kind of is hooking the actual yarn so i don't know if you can see that very well I'll try to get a good angle for you and you can see how it's kind of hooking it on there that's how you start it off and then what you would do once you have that hooked on is let me just get to my end here it dropped it here we go so what you would do at that point is you start to crank it and you will weave it in between the pins. Right now, the white peg is in the front. Then on this next peg, I'll be behind it. So it'll be then in front again, behind again, in front again, behind again. And that's how you would continue to do your first round. And all you do is just continue to crank and bring this all the way around. And you'll notice on the side of the machine, you'll see that you'll start to see the yarn capturing on the side here. Now you'll continue to do this front back motion in between the pegs. You continue to do that only up through the first round. So I'll just continue to do that just to show you exactly how this goes. Oops, it's closer to me. Okay, so here I am. I'm coming, I did my first round all the way around and I'm back to my white peg. At this point, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my yarn and wrap it in. So let me just see now here. If you can see on here, let me show you that piece right here. You see how we just put it into the tension? And then at that point, all I do is I continue to just crank it, okay? So now all I do is I just continue to go all the way around. And if I have my yarn long enough, since I just grabbed a short little piece, you know, I will continue to crank it all the way around. Okay, let me just check to see if I have any questions out here. Let's see. You should do. <laughs> Can you make different size hats with this, like kids and babies and large heads? Yes, you can. Um, there's different sizes that I'm going to show you today. Um, all you would have to do was you'd have to work out how many rounds you would need to do. Okay. So if this um, machine is, they have the smaller machines. So the smaller machines would crank out the smaller ones. I prefer to get the 48 pins because then I get to decide what size I want to do. The smaller ones are just limited to that small size because of the amount of pins that you have. 
but these are actually much bigger so I can decide, you know, what size I want to do. And remember, it's not just, you know, like hats that you could do. It's tubular. You can do panels as well. So you can do a nice little baby blanket with it. So, you know, it, a lot of people do that. And then maybe they'll take like a nice ribbon and wrap the ribbon around it. And, you know, just kind of go through it that way. So, you know, this is where you would then just continue to go all the way around and it'll start you know doing the actual um knitting and it will continue to flow down now i didn't do you know a full yarn i just took a little piece of yarn just to show you how i started off but you know you would start on that white pin and then you would just kind of go all the way around you know you don't have to start on the white pin if you want to start on another pin you can but one thing to know is that white pin is what will set off your little um, ticker here, right? So when the white pin comes around, your little counter is going to change and it'll keep track of all of the rounds that you do. Now, one of the things that I did notice on the reviews was that the counter, from what I understand from a lot of people, the counter on these central machines after a while go bad. So people get these little manual counters and they just count that way. But that's just something that I've heard in the reviews. And, you know, I, I really didn't, you know, that, that was kind of a turnoff for me. I was hoping that, you know, this counter doesn't flake out on me, you know. So, so far I haven't had any issues with it. But I did hear that that's one of the things that tend, that's one of the first things that tend to break on the machine okay um let's see you might want to try no skid pads so it won't move yeah marion definitely because you see how just i was cranking i mean this is I'm, I'm doing it on my you know little um crafting table here with this thing so it does have the suction cups but you can still kind of move it around if you're on a set table it's usually a little bit more sturdier but I do like that the Addy machine has the clamp that will hold it on that edge of the table, which is where you really need it to be. And then you won't have to worry about it sliding around all over the place. So that's definitely, you know, you can do the skid pads to maybe try to hold it in place. Um, but, you know, it, it hasn't been too, too awful. Um, I did notice as I worked with uh, heavier type threads, that's when I was starting to have the issue and having to hold it down and things like that. So, you know, let me just go through here. And if, let me know, do you guys want me to show you um, how I do it with a full yarn so you could see it going around? Let me know in the chat. Um, I just did this little example just to kind of just show you how you weed it in. But if you want me, guys, you want me to show you, just let me know. And I could do that really quick. It really doesn't take all that much time. So, you know, right now I'm just taking the little piece of yarn that I put in. I'm just taking it out. But let's see. Alrighty. Yes. Jeanette says yes. One minute tip said yes. That would be great. Okay. Oh, Nana 313331. Hey, how are you? Thanks for joining. No worries about being late. All right, so let me just take now the yarn that I am using. This is it's called Heartland. It's from Lion Brand. It's this is a really nice yarn. I enjoyed working with them. It's very soft and it is a lightweight. This one happens to be and, and if you are a knitter or a crocheter, you'll know that you know, when you buy these yarns, they have the little charts on here that tell you about the yarn so on here it's telling me that this is a number four which is a medium weight yarn and if you are crocheting let's see this is telling me that it is using do, 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 do. wow having a hard time seeing this i think this is a five millimeter crochet hook so it does tell you on here 
the type of hook that you'll need for a crochet and if you're knitting the type of the knitting needle that you would need as well so that's how you would read these charts this is a number four so it is medium weight and you know that's how you can tell about the thickness of the yarn now i do like that this yarn was super soft i love the color i think it's absolutely beautiful and i'll share with you one of my projects well let me just get this thing started so i'm going to go ahead again take about an arm's length of yarn and drop that in the middle and let me just find the white peg here it is i'm going to go ahead and hook that on there again hold that here as i go down and you just want to see it dropping and making sure that it hooks in between the two nooks and then i will go behind it the first one here and i'll go in front of the other one and then i'll continue that motion all the way around and this is just what they call casting on that's what this um, motion is called and then once you cast on the rounds after that it's just a matter of you know finishing it up and just continuing to go round and round until you get to the count that you want for the project that you're making okay so i'm going to just keep going round and round here now one of the things that you may want to invest in is a yarn bowl or some people will just take any bowl and just put it on the floor and put your yarn down to the floor. This will allow the yarn to just kind of flow freely and you know, it'll just have less tension because tension is a big factor when you're working with these knitting machines. You wanna make sure that it's not too tight and it's not too loose. So that's why I always kind of keep the yarn in my hand and I kind of just have a sense of it pulling too hard or it being just too loose and that way my project comes out evenly at the end but let's just continue here Oops. here we go I'll just continue to go through here to casting it on And now I am back to the white hook again. So what I will do is now I will put it inside here, inside the slot. And then I'm going to take my little tension guide and I'm going to put it on the second or middle slot. That's what I prefer to use for this type of thread, okay? And now from here on out, I just start cranking away and I just watch my yarn, make sure I have no issues. Now, I just kind of throw my yarn down to the floor so that way it just flows freely. And I wrap the yarn just around my fingers. It doesn't, you know, there's no preference on how you want to have it. I just keep it on my hand just to kind of get a feel for the tension and if I feel like something got stuck you know it could be a knot in the in the actual ball of the yarn so I might go back and just take a look but you're also wanting to keep your eye on the circular machine because you want to make sure as you are going down and cranking this machine you want to make sure that the yarn is going underneath these little nooks because that's what will again just kind of make it, you know, make sure that it's inside and it's not going to unravel or skip a stitch because you can have dropped stitches in here. Now, if you guys are interested in the machine, I'll go ahead and put the link for the machine in the description below. Um, again, it wasn't too costly and I think it's just a lot of fun. It's just something different that I could do and I can take it with me anywhere I go, just sit there and crank it out, you know, unless you want to bring your um, crochet hook or your knitting needles. And if you didn't want to do that, then you can just, you know, crank it out on your machine. All righty, so let's just continue this a little bit, just so you guys can get a sense for this and see how easily 
you can create a project of your own. And I'll show you some of the different yarns that I used as well. And you'll see where the differences are in the quality as well. Because of course I did go to the Dollar Tree and I pulled some of that yarn and threw it on the machine. I really wanted to see how, you know, the difference would be on the projects and there was some differences. So you really want to be careful on the type of yarn that you're using because you don't want to end up with a project that has like a ton of holes in there. So, <laughs> alrighty. So let me just see in the chat here. Um, let's see. Robin says, Oh, Robin said she wanted to see me do a project. Okay, great. All righty. So Marion says, what size needle is it compared? Is it compared to the size needle? Not sure what you mean by that, Marion. The the yarn itself is a medium weight. It's a four. The needle that I use to pick up the stitches is just a darning needle. Um, the size of that actually don't remember it really doesn't matter the size that you're using though i just really use this darning needle because of the hook itself so it's it is a 48 um needle or pin machine if that's what you're asking for but um in terms of the needle that you use i just use the darning needle or you can use a crochet hook or you can just use the little needles that come with the actual machine um, the medium one for me was fine i didn't really need the larger one or smaller one that they gave that's just what i used. but this is the 48 pin machine if that's what you're asking um if not just let me know and, and i'll see if i can um help you there Let's see. One minute tip says Miss Nancy is always showing me something new. I just love this so much to learn. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like that. Okay. Let's see. Judy says Amazon has this size 48 loop, loops for $50 to $58. Yeah, that's about right. There's another one for $39, but it wasn't the same color as this one and didn't look to see how big. Yeah, so they have the different sizes. Most likely that $39 one is going to be a smaller size. That's basically um, what they have. And, and it, those are fine too, but you're gonna be limited on the types of projects that you can make with those because they're so small. So this one kind of gives you a little bit more of a um, option on different things or different projects that you want to do. So let me just see here. Yep, my yarn was getting a little tangled there. So I'm bringing it up here and I'll just keep going. Now, let me just show you what's going on in the machine so far. And there's not too much you can see, but you'll be able, if I can pull it up here a little bit. Let's see, you can see here how it's already knitted a few rows here okay and then as you keep going you know this will continue to get longer and longer and so what i do is i end up folding it on its own just so that you know once you do that you know it puts a little bit of tension on the yarn on the inside as you fold it over and then it just helps to guide it a little bit better. Um, I find it makes it look a little more even that way. See, the beginning part is probably the hardest part because it's so loose and it doesn't have too much to help guide it. But once you have quite a few rows done, it just becomes a little bit easier. So let's just go a little bit more here now. I have about 13 rows that I've done so far. And for a hat of the size that I have, I will typically do about 90 to 100. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can use different yarn colors. So let's say you wanted to make a Christmas hat. You can do a red and white um, hat and, you know, just do about 
well, I do probably about 70 rows of one color and then 30 or so rows of the other. And the only reason why I'm giving that proportion is because when you do that flip piece, you don't want to have to see the actual brim of where the color changes actually happen. You want to give it a little bit more extra rows so that you don't see that transition on the actual brim of the hat. And that way, if you do with about a 70-30 proportion, you should be able to hide that within the inside and it's not visible from the outside. So let's see, we've done about 16, I have a little glare, I think it's about 16 rows and you can see here how it's coming along quite nicely. And I'm just gonna pause a little bit here. And what I wanna show you is just a couple of ones that I've already completed. And let's talk about some of the different yarns. So here is one, it wasn't really my favorite. But this was using the crafters square yarn so this was from the dollar tree it's a very thin yarn so it was very easy to use on the machine i didn't have any issues but because the yarn is so thin for this specific project let's see move this over to the side a little bit you can see that the yarn is not as tight as i would prefer it to be so here's this little hat, you know, and you can see the stitches on here are okay. You know, you, you can see that it was done well. It's just, you can see through it a little bit. And it's because the yarn is so thin. So, you know, this is one here that I did with that yarn. I did a smaller one. It's, you know, not huge or anything, but you just kind of move this over and I'll try to keep going <laughs> if I could. <laughs> but um, this is one that, you know, it's 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 not bad. Wasn't really my favorite, but not too bad. And that was with the again, the Dollar Tree Crafters Square Yarn. So that's what I was able to do with that one. That was one of the first ones that I did now. I do have other yarns that I think they work really well with it. There were some that I bought in Walmart. There were some you can pick up at Michael's. You can also get some at Joann's. Um, some of the typical brands is Red Heart is where you can get the really big bundles. And that's like the ones that I picked up at the Walmart. So like this is one that you can get it's red heart this is a super saver jumbo one so you can make quite a few christmas hats with this red yarn here and this again it is a number four so it will work well on the machine and you'll want to show this you'll want to um just kind of do this on your machine with a number four or lighter because if you go heavier i'm going to show you what happened when i used a heavier yarn on here and it wasn't very pretty but here's a red one here's a white one let me just move this over again these are some that worked pretty well with the machine and these are some christmas hats that i'm going to be making with the machine and i think this will be a lot of fun um again we have the crafter square brand depending if you're going to be making a hat it's just know that it's not going to be as tight of the stitching as you probably would like you can probably see just from the camera you can see a little bit of my fingers here you know it's it's just not i don't know if the camera picks this up very well but it, it is kind of holy like you can see through it it is not very um it's not very tight as you would want a hat to be. Now, of course, I live in Miami, so <laughs> we really don't have needs for hats, but you know, they're fun gifts to give out. So these are some of the other ones that I did. And here's one where I put a pom-pom on top. And on this one, this was a nice yarn to work with. This actually, you know, did come out 
pretty well. Uh, this yarn, let me see if I have it with me on hand, uh, is this one here. This is Yarnspiration Carrion Simply Soft, and it is a number four medium weight. And as you can see, it was a big, it was pretty big, used quite a lot of it. I just love the speckle on the yarn. I thought it was really pretty. And so the speckle, when you're actually doing the hat itself, you can see the little speckles on there. And I thought that came out really pretty. And then of course I added a little pom-pom at the end once I did the hat. So I think it's something, you know, for the kids would be cute. You know, what you do is you end up with the tube and then what you do is you take, you have the two sides of the tube and you put one inside the other and then you cinch the top and then you have your hat and then all you have to do is just you know, fold it here and you can add the pom-pom or you don't have to add a pom-pom. It's totally up to you if you want to do that. But I thought that was a cute one that turned out well. Now, one that did not go well was this. It's called Cameron Colorama. It is a tangle-free yarn. It does come like in this little circle like this. I actually love the yarn. It is a nice thick yarn, but the thickness of the yarn did not work well with this machine. This machine wasn't able to really handle this type of yarn. And I can tell you this is a number five yarn. So it is heavier yarn than the others. It is a very pretty yarn. I did like the way it kind of started off knitting, but as you can see here, this is the actual knitted pieces. And you can see it does knit very beautiful. And it is a very quality thick yarn. But the machine really had a hard time handling it. So um, you can see here on the top where it has the little hole, this is where you cinch it on the top and then you can put the pom-pom here or you can close it up completely. But you can see here where it started to unravel and it just started to turn out like a big hot mess. <laughs> and a lot of this was because the yarn was so thick on the machine, it really couldn't handle this type of weight. However, the Addy machine does do well on this type of yarn. So let me see if we have any questions here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so Marion says you could double the money yarn store, fold in half and sew it tight. Correct. Uh, Robin says that turned out great. One minute tip says like this much better. Judy says I love the pom pom. I like the pom pom one, nice, thanks. <laughs> Jeanette says, that's my hat. I want that one. Oh boy. Sure, I will send you a hat, but I do have another one that I made. Now this one doesn't have the pom-pom. And this one, I love the yarn. It is, see how it stretches, but it holds its own. Where it's different where like the Dollar Tree yarn doesn't really hold its shape. You can stretch it, but it doesn't feel like the quality is there. This one definitely holds really good quality. You can see the stitching on here. I think it did a really great job on it. I did not put a pom-pom, but I could add one if I like. And then all I did here was just fold it and you have your hat. And I thought this was a really pretty color. This was another heart, this was the Heartland yarn and I really love the quality of the yarn. It is very soft and it does hold its own. I do stretch it. And when you f take your project first off of the machine, you do wanna kinda just stretch it a little bit just to kinda set the stitches in place. So this one definitely, you know, kind of holds its own. And I thought this one turned out really good. The quality is there. So if you are someone that lives up north, especially with the winter coming up, 
this one is sure to keep your head a little warm. <laughs> so some of the other ones that I tried, you know, these were kind of like little failures because when I was taking the stitches off and casting off the machine, I didn't pick up the stitches correctly. And so some of them fell off and you can see what it looks like when something falls off. You'll start to see stitches like this where the ends are just, you know, unfinished almost. And if I were to pull it, I could probably continue to unravel it. And then I just ended up putting a little, um, I, I braided some of the leftover yarn, just attached it to the sides. And I said, well, I can kind of use this as a little thread catcher, you know, and just kind of put that off to the side. Now, another thing that I've seen people do is, you know, if you want to use this as like a little purse, you can do that as well. And then what you would do is you could take some fabric and put some fabric on the inside of it so that, you know, things don't fall off, you know, because this it is knitted, you know, has these little tiny holes. So if you put a piece of fabric and kind of put that on the inside, you can have yourself a little bag. So that's something that you can do as well. So it's just another little project that you can do. Um, I've seen so many things being done with these knitting machines. You can even make little pumpkins. I mean, I saw the most adorable little pumpkins that people were making off of these machines. So I thought it was really, really cute. But you can just make so many things. So let me just try to keep going on this just so you can see um, a little bit more of a finished type project on this. But let me know if you have any questions, just go ahead and put it in the chat and I'll just kind of keep looking to see if I can answer some of those for you. Let's see what we have so far. <laughs> Jeanette says, I want a pom-pom. Well, the pom-poms are super easy to make. That's just something, you know, it's not something that you do on the knitting machine itself. You just take um, a piece of cardboard or any piece of, um, you know, paper or anything. You can fold it in half and then you just wrap it around. And you'll do that, you know, I mean, depending how full you want your pom-pom, you maybe will wrap it around about 70 to 90 times. And then all you do is take a piece of yarn and cinch it in the middle and then cut the loops. And then that will kind of bring the pom-pom up to life. So you could see here, this was just the same thread. And then all I did was just kind of cut it and then you can kind of trim it you know, how you like it. I didn't make this one as full. You can make them even fuller. You know, I just was kind of just playing around with this. So, you know, I didn't make it as full, but some people like their pom-poms to be very full. So you can just go ahead and add more rounds when you wrap it around the cardboard. So just, you know, that's just something that you, you know, you can do. Now, the other thing that you can do with these machines besides hats are the panels. So you, again, you can do the baby blankets with the machines and those will sometimes be absolutely stunning because you can also weave ribbons through here so you can do you know a nice little ribbon going around the blanket for a baby i mean there's just so many beautiful things you can do and as you can see as i pull onto the stitches you'll see now how i already have i have about 23 rows so far you know, and you can see where it's already knitting and starting to look like something on here. So I can just keep on cranking this. And just making sure my little ball of yarn is not caught up on anything because I do have it on the table. I normally will throw this down on the floor. It just makes it a little easier. And, you know, if you have a little yarn ball, those are great to have because instead of just throwing it on the floor, you know, sometimes, you know, let's say you have a dog in the house, you have some dog hairs or things, you know, it won't catch all of those little things as it bounces around all over their floor. So you want to make sure that the yarn comes out clean. <laughs> so they put these little yarn balls so that the yarn can bounce around in the bowl itself, you know, and not be all over your floor. 
So let's see. Judy says, Nancy Noggin Warmers, your new biz. <laughs> so, Judy, maybe you can do leg warmers with these. Why not? I mean, I live in Miami, so I'm not sure where I would use them, but hey, I can always send them to all my family and friends up north, right? <laughs> One minute tip says Miss Nancy's showing issues to avoid great ish great info. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like it. I Alicia. Alicia says, I'm just amazed and excited. I have so much to learn. Yeah, this is, you know, this is just something that I, you know, saw. I knew it was out there. I wanted to try it. I finally just said, you know, I'm just going to give that thing a try. Went ahead and got it. And, you know, I love it. I, I, you know, was something that, you know, I could not be in my craft room all week. So it was something I was portable. I was able to take it with me. And we actually had a lot of fun pulling it together. You know, it's, it's like a little therapy, especially for the elderly. You know, it gets their minds off of things. And it's just something that this is something that... You know it's very easy that they can do you know and and it's just they walk away with a project you know it gets their mind off of things and it's just fun for them to do and you know it's a little family event that you can do together so like you know i've said before our whole family is a crafting family and we like to do all kinds of things so you know you can definitely get one of these it's really simple it's not something that is too heavy or technical um, and you can do a lot of fun projects with it. You can see here, I've got about, let's see, I've got some glare here. I think it's about 36 rows so far. And you can see how quickly, I mean, I've been stopping on and off, you know, to show you and, do, and talk and do other things. But it's definitely something that, you know, you can get this done in like 15, 20 minutes. It's really, really quick. Alrighty, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Jeanette says you can sell these. <laughs> One minute tip says if she does, she will have arms like Popeye. Yes, you get your little workout here too, right? Definitely. You know, you're just doing that motion, but hey, I'm getting my exercise in for my arms. I'll have some super strong arms. <laughs> All righty. Denise. Hi, Denise. It's first time on. I just subscribed. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate that. Awesome. I hope you enjoy this. You know, so we're trying out this machine and I think it's a lot of fun. I, you know, for something that's not so pricey, you know, it's a fun project. You know, you could do so many things with this. So, you know, I am holding down the leg because like I said, you know, it, it just makes it a little easier when you're holding one of the legs to it. Again, the Addy machine does have the clamp that you clamp onto the table, which I think that's really nice. But the Addy machine is pricey. It goes at like around 200 bucks for the same size. They have a smaller one. Um, I think they call it Addy Express. And that one's a little bit cheaper, but it is a smaller size. So you're limited again on the projects that you can make on those. And you know, you can just pop in a movie and you know, get cranking on this thing. And you know, before the movie's even over or halfway through, you'll have yourself something that's already done. <laughs> So as you can see, this is starting to really go into this little hole here. I can pull it up so you could see. And as it gets closer to the table, what I like to do is kind of just roll it onto itself. And I'll show you what I mean. It's, it's when it gets to the bottom and it starts to drag onto the table. You want to make sure that, you know, tension is one of the biggest things with these projects. So when it starts to touch the table, you want to make sure that you're keeping the same amount of tension that you've had all the way around. So what I end up doing is then I roll it over onto itself and I get it off of the table. That way, the weight of the yarn itself is giving it that tension to kind of pull it down and it just keeps the tension even. So that's just kind of a little trick that I do on my end. Um, some people use weights, um, especially when you're dealing with heavier yarn. You can use these little clamps that hold them down. So that will pull it down into place. But, you know, for the type of yarn that I'm using, which is a number four, it's a medium weight. 
I don't need any of those things. But when you start to get to those heavier yarns, which do beautiful work, um, it's just that you, you're gonna need to have either the adding machine that could handle that type of weight, or you could try using the weight um, inside the machine to hold it down. And you will have to slow down how you're cranking it because the heavier yarns, you wanna make sure they don't get hung up on the pins or, and you wanna make sure that the actual yarn wraps underneath the little nooks. So definitely something you have to look out for when you are doing these projects. Okay, so I am, can't tell here. I think I'm on number 62 or 52, hold on. Oh, I'm on 53 now. And I'm gonna keep on cranking. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see if we have any more questions. Judy says, I like this machine, pretty cool. Thank you, Nancy, for showing us how to use it. You're welcome, Judy. Denise said, I missed out. Robin says, welcome, Denise. Yes, welcome to our little party here. <laughs> Alrighty, one minute tip says, this is hypnotizing. Yeah, I guess it could be, right? And Alicia says, for the young too. That's right. It's for the elderly and for the young, because you know, we like to make our own little projects too. So you can see that I'm kind of starting to run out of the yarn here. And we are on that fifth, I can't really tell with the glare. Um, I think it says 57. So we'll see how far I can take this here. Let's see what else. Judy says, how do, I don't get how you could make a baby blanket. Wouldn't that be in a tube? Well, Judy, you have two settings, remember. So you have a setting on the side and it says T for tubular and P for panel. So when you're gonna be making a baby blanket, you will switch it over to the panel setting. And what that does is it will stop the machine. It won't allow you to crank the entire way. So it will on the first round and then it will stop. And what ends up happening is that you will start to crank the machine the same way you're doing it now, just that it will crank all the way up to like, let's say about half the circle, it'll stop it there. And then you'll go back. And so you'll go back forth doing only a half circle which then ends up becoming the panel. If, if I hope I was able to answer that. So that's how you would create um, like a baby blanket out of these, because it won't be this tube. It'll actually be a flat panel because you're only using half a circle, not a full circle. Okay, let's see. Crafting with Robin says, I could keep my grandkids busy while they're here. Definitely. This is something that they can do on their own and you can see all the creations that they can make. Now, again, what if you wanted to switch up the yarn, so say I wanted to make, um, I don't know, a white color or just bring in a blue color, any other color yarn, what I would do is just then introduce that into the nook here and continue to crank as I do it. Like you don't have to weave it in and out the way you did the first one, but you would just change the yarn here and then continue to crank and it will pick up the new yarn. Now, what you will wanna do is just tie a little knot on the side, just so that, you know, it introduces and cinches the two yarns together, especially those two colors. But you can definitely do different color yarns. You don't have to stick to just the one colored yarn. You can do different ones. Let's see, I've got about 62 now, and I'm not sure if you guys could see this well here, but my yarn is already touching the table. So what I will do is you'll see my fingers here on the bottom. I'm just gonna roll it and you can't really see it in this angle, but I'm gonna turn it around in just a second. And I'll just roll this here onto itself, and then that will take it off of the table. So now I have about, I don't know, about three, four inches or so off the table. 
So it is not just hanging on the table because when it hangs on the table, it loses that tension. So that's how you would be able to do this. Now, I'm going to stop here just for the sake of time because I know we're a little bit over the hour and I just want to be mindful. So I'm just going to look for the white needle here and I'm going to just show you how I would cast off. So here is the white needle and I am going to grab my darning needle. And with my darning needle, just push this to the side, I am going to take or cast off of the machine. So the first thing you would do is you would take your thread off of the tension. Then you would take the thread itself, just move this over, and you would drop it into the middle of the machine. So now you are not feeding any yarn into this tension. And what you're going to want to do is I just kind of gently hold it and I continue to crank one full round. And so you go around one time. And right before you get to that, you're going to see that the needles are going to start to come up. And what you want to do now is take your yarn from the inside here, and I'm going to just thread my needle here. Let's see, a little hard to thread it. You know what, you probably are not gonna be able to see this. Let me use the other one because it's a little bigger and you can see it. So I'll use the one that they gave us. It doesn't have the little bent tip, but I want you to be able to see this. So, you know, I just take my yarn and I'm going to thread it. You see how it has a really big eye there. I can just pull that through. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just pick up all of my stitches. So you're gonna go from the outside of the machine and this is the inside of the machine. I'm gonna go from the inside out, taking off all of my stitches. So you'll start from the inside and you'll pick up this loop. See, this is why the darning needle with the little bent tip is a little better because it helps you pick it up a little easier. But you basically pick that up and you pull it through. And you'll do that all the way around. So you'll continue to just crank very slowly and you wanna be very careful because you don't wanna drop any of the stitches. So you'll wanna keep that up. Oh, this one's picking up the yarn there. So you'll just wanna get that and continue to collect it and pull through. And as you do that, just, you know, kind of help guide it. Make sure that, you know, whoop, so you can drop a stitch there. And I'm going the wrong way. So let me just backtrack here. I almost dropped that stitch. So you'll want to go back and pull. And you have to be very careful because they will drop very easily and I dropped another one back here so I just have to grab it now one thing that you can do and I found this to be a little helpful is just put your finger on the stitch that you have next to pick up that way they don't fall off before you could get to it so then you just kind of pick it and pull and then you just keep going all the way around. And when you do that, you're gonna end up with your tube, which then becomes your hat. Okay. You can just kind of keep it moving. You'll see that the thread, the yarn itself will start coming off of the machine because you are literally casting off. 
and so you continue to pull it. Okay, and then I just help it along and pull. And you continue to go down the line. And this is the part that's the most tedious, I think, you know, because you got to make sure that you don't drop any stitches. I mean, if you do, it's not the worst case scenario. You can try to pick it up again. You know, it's not too big of a deal, but you don't want to have all these holes in your project. So you try to pick it up, you know, as best you can. So I'll just continue going along picking them up you can crank it you know so it gets closer to you as you go and then just keep picking it mine just keeps getting attached to the little tension here okay i'm just gonna help it along here and pull you see how it's kind of coming off so I'll just move my finger to the next one and grab it with my yarn. Okay. And then I keep going. Now what you can do also is you can grab a couple of them all at once and not have to do the one by one. So like I'll just pick, let's say this one here and I'll you know, without pulling my yarn all the way, I could just pick the next one. It just helps it to move a little faster sometimes. But I want to keep my hand on that and keep my eye to make sure that I don't drop anything else. So I just pick here, here, and here. And I'll do maybe like three at a time and then pull. And then you're just going to want to come here, crank this so it gets a little closer to me. And then I go back and I pick some more. And as long as you keep the same motion, you'll be fine towards the end. Even if you drop a stitch or two, you know, you, you definitely don't want to. But if you do, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. You know, you just keep going. So let's just keep on. I think we're about a little more than halfway there. Let's just crank it. Oop, got one caught up here. And make sure that my needle is still good. There we go. And as you crank it closer to here, you'll see that, you know, the, the needles come up. So sometimes it's easier to grab it that way. My preference is just getting it from here because I feel like when I get closer to that, um, sometimes I end up dropping the stitch because it moves it before I'm able to grab it. So sometimes it just helps me to do it this way. And it's to me, it's just a little bit quicker. So we are almost towards that end. And this is probably the most time consuming piece. Whoops, I dropped another one, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it just so you could see how it's not the end of the world if you drop a stitch. Alrighty, we're getting towards that end. Oop, and I just dropped another one. And I want to pick that one up, so. Here we go. And last one. So, I've gotten all my stitches off. Oop, this one got cut up here. 
There we go. Let me just move the machine out the way. And you can see here, you see here where I dropped that stitch? Here's that one. I could pick it up if I wanted to. Just throw it on here. But there's your tube. This is what it will look like. So what you're going to do is you no longer need the needle. So you can take it off. And then you're going to start to pull on that thread. And you'll see how it starts to tighten it up. What you're doing is you're creating that hole. So as I pull it, you see it has a little bit of that kind of motion where it's all pulling together and it kind of looks a little bit like a star almost how it's kind of cinching it so what i'm going to do is i don't close it all the way and then i just take my yarn and i stuff it inside and pull it on the other side now i tuck it in here and what i'm going to do is take the side the other side of the yarn and do the exact same thing I'm going to pull it and you'll see how it will start to close. Right now I'm going to take the yarn that I tucked in and I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to pull my first yarn a little and you'll see how they're both cinched together. Okay. You'll continue to pull that because this is going to be the outer brim of your hat. So now I'm going to take this side of my hat and I'm going to move this inside. So I'm going to have both holes on the same side and I'm going to keep pulling it until it closes shut. Now I tried to close the first one, the inner one first, and then I'll pull the second one shut. Now remember, I didn't make this one as big as we should. I kind of stopped a little short just for the sake of time. But so this hat would be a lot longer because we would have more rounds of it. But this would be like maybe for a kid size. So I think someone was asking if you could make the kid size and you can. And then what I would do here is I would, you know, just kind of tuck it, cinch it. And then I would tie a knot here. And now you're left with all of this extra string. You don't need any of this. So you grab your little snips. I have my little snips here and I'll just cut it here. And I don't know, maybe about a little less than five inches of so. And I would just tie the little knot no one is going to see this. This is going to be the inside of the hat. So once you tie this, and I'll just do a third one. Then I'm going to flip it over. And here's your little hat. And I'll just kind of stretch out. You want to set the stitches. So just kind of stretch it out all the way around. And so you have a nice little hat for a little kid. You can fold it if you like, or you can just, you know, leave it flat. It's totally up to you. You could do the little pom-pom if you wish. You can do that as well. But look at the stitching. I mean, let me try to put the overhead for you. You can see the stitching on the yarn. It's actually pretty nice, you know, and so you have a really cute hat for any little kid. You know, now if you want to add the pom poms again, just take a little piece of cardboard or something that you can wrap things around. I have this little piece of paper. So let's say I wanted to make the pom pom. You know, I'm just going to wrap the yarn around and depending how full you want the, the pom pom to be, you'd probably need to wrap it about, I don't know, about 70 to 80 times. And then you would take it off. Let's let's just pretend that this was wrapped a lot more. You would take another piece of string and you would just kind of lay it on top and tie a knot. 
Now, once I do that, you want to make sure that it's in the middle. You cinch that here, and then what you're going to do is you'll take the ends of the yarns and you'll clip them. And you'll see how it's starting to make the little pom-pom here. Let me just finish snipping these. And I think I got them all. And so, you know, you'll have your little pom-pom. Just pretend that this was a little fuller, but you know, you have your little pom-pom here. And then all you do is you take the thread and you bring it down on the little hole and you feed it through here. You can pop your little finger in there. Just grab the thread and pull it. And then you flip it inside out. And then all you have to do is tie a little knot here. And then once you flip it over, you'll have the little pom-pom on here. So obviously it would be a lot fuller because you would do more rounds of it. And you can make it as fluffy or not as fluffy as you like. You know, and then you just kind of trim it. You know, as you go around, you trim it around just to make that pom-pom. But that's basically it. You know, you have a nice little hat for a little kid. You know, I've made plenty of hats um, to play with the machine. You know, I think that, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's something that, you know, you can do with the kids. You can do with the elderly. You know, they seem to really love it. But I think, you know, it's a cute little project that you can do with some friends just sitting around with the circular machine and you can make different things so this was using the tubular setting again you can use the panel setting to get the blankets done and I'm gonna try give that a try for some of the other yarns that I have um, and I've got tons of yarns that you can get from all different places I'll go ahead and put the links below if you're interested in some of the yarns that I've used on the projects that I've made that work well with the machine so I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Um, let me see if there are any quick questions on here. I, I think you guys seem to like it. Uh, let's see, Judy says, put that, the scrawny pom-pom on that holy hat. <laughs> yeah, I might do that actually. <laughs> and let's see, everyone seems to love it. So cute, I love it. The, yeah, the right yarn makes a big difference. So, you know, definitely when you're checking the yarns that you're going to be using make sure i found a uh, medium weight four or less is works really good with this machine if you have an adding machine um, you can probably do a lot heavier yarn and i'm sure that the projects will come out really great on that as well so thank you guys for joining so much i really appreciate it i hope you really enjoyed this session if you did please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and um Let's see, if, if you have any questions, go ahead and reach out to me on our Facebook group. I'll put a couple pictures out that I've done for some projects and I hope to be crafting guys with you soon.